Tuesdays is known as $2 Tuesdays at wagershawk.com and sportsmemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2. Wager Talk today, Tuesday, March 15th. We are inching ever so close to the start of the NCAA tournament, and we do have a couple of official first four play-in games tonight on Tuesday, a couple more tomorrow on Wednesday. ton of NIT, don't forget, starting tonight on Tuesday and tomorrow on Wednesday as well. There's always some hidden value in the NIT tournament in college hoops. We also have some NBA, and as I told Teddy yesterday, shh, don't tell anybody, it's quiet time. NBA season continues to chug along. Uh, had another nice winter last night, both Sunday and Monday for my clients. So uh, NBA College Hoops, March Madness is here. And we will be here every day, Monday through Friday this week. As always, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, live here on Wager Talk TV. And, of course, archived 24-7 for your viewing pleasure right here on YouTube. And don't forget about the podcast. When you're out and about driving around or working out, listen to us audio form on your favorite podcast app. We've got a loaded show today on Tuesday. It's my co-host, Teddy Covers. I'm Steve Merrill, filling in for the Prez, who is inching ever so closer to Teddy Covers in the Vegas vicinity as we speak. And, uh, Teddy, we got Tony Mejia up today on the first part of the show. We're going to look at some NBA Sun Pelicans. Also going to look at one of those NIT games, Princeton and VCU, one of my Virginia teams that did not make the turn. We had four teams get automatic bids from the state of Virginia, UVA and VCU on the outside looking in, though, in the NIT Teddy, you got a big game breakdown for the NIT as well. Colorado, St. Bonaventure. And then we've got Jimmy Adams on. And Jimmy's going to look at a couple NCAA tournament games. Akron, UCLA, and South Dakota Providence. South Dakota State Providence, which is one I'm really excited to talk about, as that's a 13 seed who's actually favored over a four seed. But Teddy covers, before we get to all of that, what did you learn last night on Monday? I know you did that opening line report, by the way, for college hoops. Everyone check that out with Drew Martin opening line NCAA report here on YouTube TV. Uh, what else did you learn on Monday, Teddy? Well, uh, I went 2-0 again in the NBA last night. Now 19-3 nice. and three the last 22. And two of the three losses were legit bad beats, my brutal beats, both of them. I have 15 winning reports the last 17 days. I'm hot right now, flat out hot. Um, what does it take to win? be hot? You have to win more than your fair share of coin flips. The 50-50 games. I won them all weekend. I won another one last night with the Bucks making a run in the fourth quarter on the Jazz. So I'm seeing things pretty clearly, and I'm winning more than my fair share of coin flip games, and that's what it takes to go on a big hot streak, run a big all-sports run right now, a big NBA run, and the college hoops has been great, too, for even longer. So what do you do when you're hot? All right? This is key. All right? When you're hot, number one, it's okay to play a little bit heavier on the cards. You know, when I'm seeing things clearly, I'm comfortable releasing four, five, six games instead of one, two, three. It's okay to bet a little bit more, upping your unit sizes when you're hot, lowering them when you're cold. But the single most important thing to do when you're hot, keep working just as hard so your streak will last. When you stay focused and you keep working just as hard, little runs turn into big ones. When you get all excited, you're like, oh, I'm hot, yay, and running around, and oh, let's spend some money, and oh, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow's card. Oh, I know who's going to win. That's when you, your hot streak all of a sudden starts to come to an end. So, as long you know, uh, keep your nose to the grindstone. And there's three pieces of advice for when you're seeing things clearly across sports. What about you, Mr. Murrell? What did you learn last night? Yeah, I know. we know some people that get really excited when they get hot and talk about it here on the show, but I won't name any names. Um, yeah, Teddy, yeah, I didn't actually look to see how you did last night in the NBA. As I was saying, I won back-to-back -back nights because you'd been so red hot. I hadn't checked yet. I didn't want to jinx you. So I'm nice to hear that it's now 19-3. and three. I mentioned yesterday it was a 17-3 and three run. But you bring up a great couple great points. First of all, I've always said picking the right teams is only third in the order of importance as far as winning long-term in sports betting. It's money management and it's shopping for line value. And money management's the key. And I want to get your thoughts on this. You know, we do percentage of bankroll. That's how we rate the plays at wagertalk.com. That's how I've always told my clients. You know, most of my plays, well, they're anywhere from 3 4 or 5%. Most of them are 4% plays. Um, you know, there's two ways to do percentage of bankroll. You could literally do it every single day, which would be a lot of work, you know, and adjust your bankroll. The pro to that is that you are playing more when you hit a hot streak um, and you're playing a little less when you're on a downturn. You're going to basically never have the risk of ruin at that point. 
Um, but also the downside of that, Teddy, is that you will cool off at some point. And if you're all of a sudden betting more and more and more and then you hit that peak, you know, then you're losing more and more and more. So what I tell my clients to do when they ask is, you know, you can do either. As long as you're consistent, either one is fine. But I like to maybe reset after a season, after a year. Or more importantly, I have a win parameter. If you increase by 50% of bankroll, then you bump up, then you reset your 4% play or whatnot. I just want to get your thoughts on the money management. So I, I, I mean, the, the I, I use the words a little bit a couple of times that I was trying right. to. It's okay to bet a little bit more. It's not okay when you're hot. You're betting one unit to now be betting three units or whatever. You know, I mean, that's you know, you minima minimal increments. Similarly, if you're you know if you're seeing the card clearly, you've been playing one, two, or three games. Okay, play a few more. You don't want to play 19 games if you've been playing three or two. Uh, it's okay to play four or five, but in terms of the timing of when to readjust bankroll and unit sizes. That's at a perennial debate. I mean, it really is. Some guys want to adjust every day. Some guys want to adjust every week. Some guys want to adjust at the start of the season. Some guys want to adjust off a longer hot streak or a longer cold streak. That's what I tend to do. Um, but I don't think there's a right answer there or a wrong answer there, uh, Steve. Uh, I think it's simply a matter of... Uh, Number one, bankroll preservation, and number two, personal preference in terms of how often you want to readjust your unit sizes based on current bankroll. Yeah, I will tell you the one right answer in this whole discussion is whatever you do, you do it <laughs> consistently, right? You don't change your mind. Yes. You don't do daily adjustments one day. You don't do hot streak adjustments the next. So that's the consistency is the key. And you don't want to decide this during a hot streak either, guys. You want to have a plan ahead of time before you start betting. Write it down. I guarantee you less than 1% of all bettors have ever written down their investment plan. And this is something I recommend in the financial world to have a written plan of action. And we'll bring in Tony Mejia from wagertalk.com. And Tony, you're a good guy to talk to about this because you play a lot of different sports. You're a pretty heavy action guy, heavy volume guy, I should say. Um, Tony, do you adjust your bankroll when running hot, cold, or do you just kind of tread along with the same percentage uh, regardless on a daily basis? Yeah, cold. I mean, you, you really have to be leery about you know, you always feel, I, I always feel I'm seeing things uh, right because I, I stay with it day to day. But if the results aren't there, then that's when you have to kind of scale back a little bit on on your bet sizes. Um, you know, typically I, uh, my biggest bet's always going to be a four unless I go with a five. Fives have been great. Um, you know, fours have been spotty. And, and uh, you know, you just want to continue to grind away and, and do things uh, exactly like Teddy said. You, you always have to work hard whether it's going well or not. Uh, because if you do things the right way, you know, day after day, you'll see the results. And, you know, that's that's really the, the, the key to all of it is stay plugged in. I know that there are a lot of people that do things a lot of different ways. There are people that don't watch games that do what we do. Uh, I, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Princeton today. I watched every second of Ivy Madness, both games, and I watched most NC, you know, most uh, conference tournaments because uh, I want to see, you know, match these, these players with their numbers and with, the, you know, what I actually have to look out for. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that gives me a leg up going into the tournament when most of these uh, players haven't been seen by most people. I mean, this is uh, the only time you'll look into uh, Texas Southern and Texas A&M Corpus Christi tonight. So uh, I've already seen them play. I've got some uh, you know determinations, and now we'll see if they come to fruition. And we'll get to see one of those teams play a second time after they win tonight, right? After the 16 versus 16, they will officially get a tournament win Um I'll tell you, Tony, before we get to the NBA game, Suns-Pelicans, let's look at that NIT game. You talked about Princeton-VCU. Uh, VCU lost Friday as a three-and-a-half-point favorite to Richmond. Uh, they were a team that only had five losses at the time. I don't think they were – they were not a last four out, so I don't know if they're disappointed maybe for not making the tournament. What's your read? I mean, the NIT is all about motivation. Princeton, meanwhile, loses the final as the one seed right against Yale. Um, could Princeton maybe be a little flat here having to travel short notice, short rest after basically blowing their chance even more so to make the tournament? Yeah, I mean, Princeton would uh, long for the days when the Ivy League champ would get in uh, right. based on the regular season because they didn't have a tournament. Oh, but, I mean, but well, Ivy Madness has been around for a while now, so the, those are the breaks. Uh, you know, they, they made a run at Yale, but Yale was uh, more consistent all weekend. And I think that's that's where I'm, I'm headed with this uh, matchup. I just don't see Princeton playing the type of defense that you need uh, to go out on the road in a game that VCU wants to play and win. They're, they're uh, the, one of the headlines in the, the Richmond Times Dispatch today is uh, you know, we're not here to BS around uh, from one of the VCU players. So they they want to make a run. Uh, their their season ended at the hands of the rival Spiders. 
So, you know, you know they've been uh, stewing all weekend. They knew they weren't going to get an, uh, an automatic bid, uh, pardon me, an at-large bid uh, to the NCAA tournament. So this isn't a really, uh, you know, a buzzkill that they're stuck in the NAT. They got a, a, a three seed, a home game, uh, you know, go extend your season as long as you can. And, uh, you know, in Ace Baldwin, they have a, a, one of the better uh, on-ball defenders at the point in all of college basketball, and, and uh, he kind of sets the tone for what they want to do on the defensive end. They don't have anybody in the Ivy League that pressures the ball like that. Um, you know, all Princeton, decent rebounding team, but I think uh, BCU has them there as well. And the the number is, uh, you know, manageable, six and a half, sevens now. Uh, throughout most, you can still find a six and a half here or there. And that's basically having the lead in the final minute and getting a stop and getting some free throws and extending that margin. Uh, and I think uh, the uh, Rams will do the bare minimum is doing just that. If they uh, go ahead and uh, make it a double-digit breezer of a win, then uh, that would be fine by me too. So the Ivy League is not on my radar uh, during the regular season at all. Um, and in terms of Princeton, like when I think of Princeton, all I think is the Princeton offense from back, back in the day that used to be very difficult right. to match up again and we have very little time to prepare for it. You know, Princeton used to give teams trouble. Uh, in the first round of the big dance. Does Princeton still run that? I mean, what do they do uh, uh, offensively? Are, are they a difficult team to prepare for? Or is this a scenario where VCU is just going to outclass these guys from beginning to end? And, uh, uh, and no, I mean, the, the, there's guys that can play, Teddy. But, yeah, Mitch Henderson is there, who you probably remember playing uh, for that team. He's been there as a coach for a while now. Uh, and, of course, they still have uh, Pete Carrill's principles, as a driving force, but I mean, their pace is, you know, one of the slower ones in the Ivy League, but everybody in the Ivies is, is averaging, uh, you know, over 68 possessions per 40 minutes in terms of uh, calculations. The only team that doesn't is is Dartmouth, which is the worst uh, team in that league. Uh, so everybody kind of gets up and down. Uh, Princeton averaged 79.9 points per game this season. So that's not a, a team that's going to beat you 58 55 you know they'll get up and down their, their defense is decent from from a, a points per game standpoint just under 70 um and if you watch them play they'll uh they're, they're not going to 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 uh slow down and milk shot clock against you and especially against uh, vcu i mean if you ask me is this going to be a higher scoring game or a lower scoring game vcu tends to slow games down with their pressure because it takes you longer to get into your half court sets uh but i i would say that this is probably going to be a higher scoring game as well, if they if they can generate points off turnovers and get in transition, they can get out and do what they do. But uh, you know, Princeton's going to try and, and you know get shots down uh, at the rim, get easy looks, and uh, you know their effective field goal percentage all year was was a lot higher than everybody else in the Ivy League. Um, they took 28 threes a game. That was also tops in the Ivy, made 11. Uh, so this is a team that is going to try to beat you with their offense, which is another reason why I like VCU. Uh, you know, teams that really don't look to defend you on the road uh, in, a, in a situation like this where it's a one-off, um, you know, don't, uh, don't do anything for me in terms of wanting to back them. It's a Tony Mejia, wagertalk.com. And uh, Tony, we got a lot of college basketball talk on the show today, NIT, NCAA action. But I want to do talk about one of the NBA games tonight. There's four of them on the board. And as we're doing this show live here at about 12, 10 Eastern, a uh, big move in the Phoenix and New Orleans game. Suns have just dropped from a five and a half point road favorite to a four and a half point favorite about two, three minutes ago. Total has gone from 229 up to 231. Looking at the injury report, uh, Tony, the only guy that was questionable in New Orleans was C.J. McCollum. Uh, Teddy, McCollum somebody upgraded. knows something. Yeah. Is it McCollum? Yeah. has been upgraded to probable. I figure that's what yeah, it had he's in, everybody else was listed as out. And McCollum's in a quarantine situation. It wasn't an injury situation. So when him being upgraded to probable means he's going to play, one would think. Right, his health and safety you know. protocols. Um, yeah. You know, Tony, so New Orleans is one and four straight up ATS their last five. They're four and one to the over in those games, and it's not a coincidence. I mean, their defense has just been horrendous. They've given up 125 points and 52% shooting those last five games. I had a best bet on the Suns Sunday night uh, for my clients, the 140 111 win over the Lakers. By the way, Lakers, 2 and 0 when LeBron scores 50, 0 and 7 the last seven when he doesn't. It was a pretty safe bet, in my opinion. He wasn't going to get 50, so that was a nice winner there. Um, all seriousness, though, how are you looking at this one now? Phoenix, New Orleans, uh, Suns now a four and a half point road favorite. A big total on this one up to 231 now. 
Yeah, Steve. I mean, w Willie Green said yesterday that the hope was that C.J. McCollum would get his two uh, negative tests and be good to go tonight. So not entirely surprising uh, that he's going to play. And, uh, you know, that's that's key for the Pelicans because it gives them at least a fighting chance. I don't know that, uh, you know, this number should be at four and a half, five. It's kind of trappish. But I, I mean, you just have to, to ride with uh, with the Suns because one quick factor, I mean, they've They've gotten uh, the Pelicans have gotten contributions from the likes of Trey Murphy. He had a, a monster game the other night. They're playing Jose Alvarado, the rookie out of Georgia Tech. They're playing all these kids out there, uh, and their last two, three games have all been at home against the Magic, the Hornets, and the Rockets. And uh, you know the Magic sometimes play defense. The Hornets and Rockets obviously don't. Um, you know we, we saw the, uh, the the Pelicans score 120 points in a 142-120 loss to the to the Hornets. Uh, then they they scored 130 against the Rockets. So you know that's not going to fly against the Suns. Uh, Phoenix is going to come in and and try to clamp down on defense. That's what they do, uh, you know, best. So from that standpoint, even with CJ McCollum back, uh, it's still Phoenix or pass for me in, in terms of what the expectation would be. Um, you know, you, you still got to deal with Jonas Valanciunas. I mean, these are NBA players, uh, but Phoenix is in a really nice rhythm right now. It's settling in with Devin Booker having returned um, from his uh, COVID protocol issues and uh, Cameron Payne now settling at the point uh, in, in Chris Paul's place. So uh, my clients and I cast a 5% big ticket betting uh, on New Orleans over the total uh, in that uh, – Monday night game against Houston, and I'm telling you, second half of that game, particularly during crunch time, Pelicans play defense, and at times, <laughs> you know, it hasn't been consistent for New Orleans, but at times that defense has been there uh, for the Pelicans this season. Certainly, we think about Phoenix uh, as a defensive-minded team, and this total sitting at 230. Does that look a little high to you, uh, Tony? Does the under make sense in this one? Even with hey, my, I mean, look, you, you – you, you mentioned New Orleans is uh, defense. I mean, they have one of the they have the best uh, rookie defender in the NBA in Herbert Jones, and he's he's got some uh, special instincts that you know you, you rarely see on that side of the ball um, that you you can project going forward. Um, he'll really be a di difference maker on that side of the ball for the next five seven years uh, as he continues to mature and, and understand. Um, you know, what gambles he needs to take, but he's still a rook. Uh, and, uh, you know, with C.J. McCollum back, it's great because you you figure that they'll be more consistent on offense, which helps you set your defense. So you're not you're not sitting there backtracking or, um, you know, you're drowning in, in a, a 10 0 run, which the Suns can get you in uh, rather quickly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it's a big benefit. Uh, that T.J. McCollum's in this game. It gives him more of a shot. Obviously, when I looked at th this card, I said, oh, if C.J. doesn't play, that number looks slight. Now it looks, uh, you know, more like a, a a fair spread. However, you know, you want teams that are used to winning late in games uh, in this situation. And, yeah, Phoenix is going on the road. Um, you know, they, they won two out of the last three away from home, beating the Heat and uh, the Magic down in Florida. Uh, they play the Rockets next. On a, uh, so this is the first night of a back-to-back. -back. I think they'll be plugged in. Uh, you know, they scored 140 on uh, on the Lakers on Sunday night, and that was my big play that day, a, a 4% winner for my clients. Uh, and, you know, look sharp doing it. Obviously, the Lakers are in a heap of trouble. But uh, I, even with C.J. McCollum back, I think uh, – New Orleans isn't going to last for 48 minutes uh, and, and keep this as a two-possession game. It's Tony Mejia, wagertalk.com, and uh, Tony knows his NBA. And don't forget, there'll be more NBA talk if you'd like to get more NBA in the four games today at uh, 415 Eastern here on Wager Talk TV every weekday NBA tip-off show. Tony, number one last year in NBA sides at wagertalk.com, a mere 121% increase of bankroll. And Tony, a 17-6 and six spread run. 70 and 37. We thought Teddy was hot. 70 and 37 run on spreads in the NBA. Uh, just red hot. With that said, though, you got an NCAA best bet I see on your page. What else you got going at wagertalk.com? Yeah, we'll we'll get uh, the NBA package up uh, very shortly. I ran out of time just before uh, the show because I wanted to have it up uh, as well. But yeah, college and uh, NBA packages tonight all week. And uh, and then a little meet and greet on Friday. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing everybody that's going. Uh, disappointed that you're not going to be there, Steve. But uh, we'll, we'll meet up at some point. 
Yeah, I'll be there in spirit, and I am actually looking forward. We have breaking news on Wager Talk today. There's going to be a three-point shooting horse contest, maybe, with Tony involved, Ski Profit, Jay Money, Ronald Kabang, maybe Andrew McGinnis, too. He's got some height. So, uh, Teddy, we're going to have some video. One of our producers, Chris Allen, is bringing a brand-new GoPro for the special event and for the meet-and-greet. So, uh, Tony, good luck in that. We'll catch up soon. And once again, that meet-and-greet, 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock Vegas time on Friday at the Westgate. Uh, find out more information on Twitter, at Wager Talk, at Wager Talk on Twitter. Of course, you can follow Teddy, Teddy underscore covers, Teddy underscore covers. And I'm Steve Merrill, 2Rs1L, Steve Merrill on Twitter as well. Teddy, let's get back to college hoops. Give us 30 seconds. Get your big game breakdown ready. A late-night special, your national TV ESPN2 late-night special between St. Bonnie and Colorado coming up in 30 seconds. Would you like to bet $20 and win $100 at BetMGM regardless of your wager's outcome and get $100 in free wager bucks? Just go to wt.buzz slash MGM for more details and find out if you're eligible for this amazing offer. It is time for today's big game breakdown. Let's talk college hoops NIT style on ESPN2 late night West Coast bailout special, Colorado and St. Bonaventure. Looking at the Wager Talk live odd screen. Well, we've seen a move in the last five minutes. All right. The buffs were minus four. Now we're seeing St. Bonnie's money. Minus three and a half popping up. Minus threes popping up. So the price on Colorado getting cheaper by the minute. First question, is Colorado interested? Huh? Tad Boyle, a head coach, by the way, who twice has taken his Colorado teams on deep NIT runs, including a run of the Final Four. A head coach who's 5-0 and straight up and against the spread, his last five tries, an NIT favorite at home. Boyle, quote, they really enjoy each other's company. They're very close. They really love playing together. We've just got a great synergy on this team. You can't force that as a coach. I wish there was a way you could create that. There just isn't. Um, to get a group that generally come together and just enjoys each other. Okay? This isn't a senior laden team that's disappointed. This is a young and hungry team <laughs> filled with underclassmen that can gain something from a run in the NIT. Best I can tell, Colorado's interested. Now we look at the St. Bonnie side of the equation. All right. And the Bonnies, look, they had a good non-conference schedule. They were ranked earlier this year. They were projected to be the best team in the A-10. They weren't. They finished fourth. They got bounced out of the A-10 tournament. Now, they're making the longest travel spot they've made all year. Buffalo uh, to Boulder. Okay, so the longest road trip. And they're playing, what, 11 o'clock local time? <laughs> you know? Uh, the head coach, Mark Schmidt, quote, we're just happy to be playing – uh, you know, we're excited about it. We're going to go compete. We're going to try to play our best. It's going to be a challenge for us. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge for you. And oh, by the way, what's the thing that St. Bonnie's doesn't do that well? They don't really shoot the three well. They don't really defend the three well. What does Colorado do particularly well? They shoot the three pretty well. Uh, number 30 in the country from beyond the arc. And St. Bonnie's is a one, uh, sorry, a, a one big man, you know, Osun Uni, uh, who's a monster, low post defender, and the four guards. I think the Buffs will be more balanced. I think the Buffs will take care of business, and I think the price is cheap. Give me Colorado, minus three right now. At home, late night bailout special, and the Buffs take care of business. There's your big game breakdown. Back to you, Mr. Merrill. Yeah, NIT is all about motivation, as we've talked about, but scheduling, too. And that one jumped out to me as well, Teddy. I mean, you got a team on one day's notice, not even knowing who they're playing till late Sunday night, traveling cross-country and playing now in the thin air and altitude as well. <laughs> so that one jumped out to me as far as the scheduling spot. So that was good. good take for the big game breakdown. A quick reminder, you know, we normally have the $2 guest on for $2 Tuesday. We got... Jimmy Adams up here next, but he is not the $2 guest because I just found out who it was. I had to do a little research on this, Teddy. We do have a $2 capper today, and it's the Prez. So that's why we don't have a guest today because the Prez isn't on. But he has a $2 best bet in the NHL at wagertalk.com. So don't forget, it is $2 Tuesday. The Prez, 
$2 NHL best bet. And sportsmemo.com, you know, if $2 Tuesday is not good enough for you, that's too expensive. It's even better at sportsmemo.com. It's $1.67 Tuesday because you get three best bets for $5. And uh, they got three cappers right now at the sister site, sportsmemo.com. Joe D'Amico, Jesse Shul, and Ross Benjamin, all three best bets for just $5. That works out to a buck sixty-seven. So sportsmemo.com, wagertalk.com, $2 Tuesday and less at both sites. But let's bring on Jimmy Adams because he is a college basketball expert. And, Jimmy, I want to talk – couple NCAA tournament games with you. We, uh, we did a couple NIT games already on the show. A lot of those going tonight and tomorrow. Uh, we have a couple play-in games starting tonight and tomorrow, but we also got a lot of games on Thursday and Friday. I'm going to hold off on the Providence-South Dakota State game because uh, that's one I definitely want to talk to you about. That's a very interesting setup there with a uh, 13 seed as a favorite um, against a, a very lucky Providence team. But first, uh, let's look at a different game here. Let's look at that Akron-UCLA game. You know, UCLA, we talk about the first four tonight and tomorrow. Almost every year, one of those teams seems to make a run in the tournament. UCLA did it last year. They're obviously a lot higher seeded this year. Um, what's your take on this? Is Akron a live dog? They're about plus 14 last I checked. Yeah, so uh, good to see you guys. Great to be back on Wager Talk today. Um, so, yeah, I like the Akron side. We've seen this number tick down off the opener of 16 uh, down to 14. Akron kind of became a bet on team for me when they went to uh, Ohio a few weeks ago as a seven-point dog. Uh, won that in a rocking chair winner straight, in straight up fashion pretty easily. Uh, but that's eight straight wins now for the Zips. They beat Kent State by 20 to win the conference tournament. Uh, Zips uh, want to play at a slow pace, a very slow pace. Uh, they're good at knocking down threes, and they can also drive to the basket. Enrique Freeman is going to be a key for me in this game. He's a really good rebounder at 10.8 rebounds per game, and he's going to need to be big if the Zips are going to be are going to have a shot here at uh avoid avoiding being blown out and maybe even potentially pulling the upset uh ucla looked decent for a little bit against arizona uh they obviously fall 84 76 in the pac-12 title game the bruins don't turn the ball over so it's imperative that akron's efficient on offense and they knock down those shots from outside uh that being said I think that uh, 14 is too many, and um, like I said, we've seen this uh, number come down off the opener. So give me the zips, and we'll see if we can stay inside that number. Jimmy says, follow the sharp money on this one. Look at Akron plus the points in the first round of the big dance. And, of course, the other game you wanted to talk about was Providence and South Dakota State. And South Dakota State, a team that drains the three ball. Providence, a team that everyone hates their analytics. <laughs> and they've hated their analytics all year. And the Friars, all they've done all year is burn wise guy money again and again and again. And the wise guys continue to bet against the Friars here. Uh, I'm seeing Providence minus two, total 149 and a half. Betting marks expect the tempo here to go up and down the floor. Does that favor the favorite? Or does that favor the underdog in this one? I know tempo going up and down the floor definitely going to favor uh, South Dakota State. We have a live dog situation here in my mind, Teddy. Uh, you're right. Sharps have been trying to fade Providence all year long. Um, this is where uh, Providence goes down. A 21 game win streak. That's what the Jackrabbits are on. Um, number one, an effective field goal percentage. Number 12, an adjusted offensive efficiency. They shoot three ball better than anyone in a anyone in america knocking down about 45 percent of their outside shots they score 87 points a game with what seems like relative ease just a fantastic offense and they do uh, a good job at preventing a ton of second chance opportunities um you know like you said jackrabbits want to run and uh, i'm not sure uh the friars are going to want to run with them in this game so we all know providence is the luckiest team in basketball a lot of overtime wins, a lot of close wins, a lot of balls bouncing their way. Um, so they lose 85-58 in the conference tournament to Creighton. Um, they don't do a great job of creating turnovers. They don't shoot free throws very well. If I have to give them credit, I will say they do defend the three-point line pretty well, but that's not going to matter against an offense like South Dakota State. So uh, live dog alert here for me. Take the Jackrabbits. And uh, I think they win this game outright. 
And that's the uh, early game. You don't have to wait long for that one. That's an early tip off one of the first games to go on Thursday, St. Patrick's Day. And then the uh, Akron game that you reference is the late night game on Thursday. So Jimmy Adams covering both early and late for us NCAA tournament action on Thursday. And Jim, you got a strong 5% best bet for the NCAA tournament on your page right now. You've also got a 4 percent for the NIT tonight on Tuesday. What else you got planned this week at wagertalk.com? Uh, yeah, so it, it's been a great last month, 60% in our last 35 plays. We've hit three of four of our 5% big tickets. So, look, I do have the 5% playoff, like Steve mentioned. Um, it's going to be a huge week. Teddy says it all the time. It's going to be to get a all-access pass, a subscription. Um, if you want the individual play, you can absolutely get it. It's up locked and loaded right now, 5%. But there's going to be a bunch of plays this week, so get involved and let's have a big one. Yeah, it's Jimmy Adams, wagertalk.com, a big five percenter in college NCAA tournament action and also an NIT play tonight as well. And as Jimmy said, Teddy, I mean, daily plays, look, 25 bucks for a 4%, 35 for a 5%. You can do the math, figure out what works for you. But there's some great specials right now. The March Madness package gets you the rest of the tournament all the way through April 4th. Everything, NIT and college hoops and CBI for just $199. Or if you want to dip your toes in the water for a one week, it's 69. That's a fantastic offer. I mean, you're getting basically half the NIT games here the next couple nights before that whole tournament. And then you get NCAA Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You get about half the NCAA tournament games and all that, just $69 for a seven-day college hoops package for each and every capper, whether it's Jimmy, Jimmy Adams, Steve Merrill, or Teddy Covers, wagertalk.com. One guy whose package you will not get at wagertalk.com, unfortunately. You can only get his information here on Tuesdays on Wager Talk today, but you can occasionally find him on the Sports Grid radio network <laughs> and TV as well. Sports Grid, of course, S Sirius XM Channel 159, and then Sports Grid TV, and that's Dave Sherpan from the Las Vegas Strip. And Dave, uh, let's get right into it, man. No drama today. We got NCAA tournament about to tip off here in six hours. Uh, let me throw it to you. Um, Thoughts on the tournament? I mean, where do you want to run with it? Um, any action you've seen early? Your thoughts on who got in, who didn't? Uh, just your general thoughts. Uh, I'll, I'll throw the ball to your court. This is what I call, uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to see both of you and not see Prez, because that means there definitely is not going to be any look out your window, drama. Look out your window. You might see the Prez. Be careful. If you he don't know where I live. Right, Listen, him. he <laughs> don't know where I live, and we don't got to tell him. I'll go meet him. It's fine. It's okay. No, seriously. Um. I call this, uh, I, I, my friend Linda, uh, who I worked with at the sports book, uh, for years dubbed this boy band week and it's classic. It is just, it is the best week of the year for bringing people into Vegas because Super Bowl was one day. Okay. This is, we get the whole program. We get, we get you to see you for three or four days in different states of mind and the boy bands come in groups. <laughs> and the lead singer is the guy that, you know, had – he has the bookie. He has the accounts offshore. He has the accounts on his phone. He knows what he's doing. He's got his side guys who ride with him, and they're like the wannabe sharps, and they think they know, but they don't know that you're supposed to have bet numbers, and they never have their money right. They're never going to be the lead singer, but they hang with him. And then there's the roadies. Right. The, the the backup grunt guys that like they're looking. I mean, they're there for the experience, but they're not really watching the games. They're looking at the, the girls. They're asking the waitresses out. They're looking to set up the club later and all that stuff. That's what March Madness is in Vegas. As far as the tournament, there's so much money in this pool, Merrill and Teddy. Like they're right. You ain't got to worry about line movement. You ain't got to worry about all that stuff in the book. It's 16 games. It's 16 games on Thursday, 16 games on, it's it. So it's, you don't have to move lines. It's, I think it's the, one of the easiest weeks of the year to book. It's a, it, it's great. I loved it. I mean, I think, um, you know, you get into a rhythm and you, you bet it's, it's a lot of fun. So I got to ask you, Dave, will you be, and I agree with you in terms of this weekend being a ton uh, of fun with 60 games it's a right amount of games to be able to have fun and watch some basketball as opposed to last weekend where you ain't having fun <laughs> there's too much going oh. on uh so uh this is a, a a little bit more relaxed pace 
And I thought your description of the betters that come in was so spot on. I can think of 10 different groups that I was a part of before I lived in Vegas that came out here that were exactly that group. The one guy that knows what he's doing, a couple of hangers on, and then a bunch of guys that have no idea and are more worried about going to the club that night. That's perfect. That's a lot of who's that's, coming in uh, to town that's it. Uh, this week. But all that being said, uh, Mr. Sheriff, and uh, first of all, how excited are you for March Madness? Second of all, where are you seeing the money early on? Who do the wise guys like? Who do the public like? Well, I mean, I, one, I'm excited because I don't have to sit in a book for 14 to 16 hours and book the games. I'm really excited <laughs> that I can just enjoy it again on the other side. Because, yes, I was part of the boy band group all the time. Teddy, it's minus 800 that you were the lead singer guy of your boy band group sure. who came from March Madness, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, there's no, there's no question about that. I was the lead singer guy, too. There was no question about that. But there were guys that learned, and now they have kind of carried on the tradition. They're the, they're the lead singers. As far as the money, I don't think anybody has really showed their hand too much. I mean, the gambling community is all over San Diego State or South Dakota State. I'm sorry, South Dakota State against Providence. That's it. Like, that's the one that I keep hearing. I keep hearing on the shows. Um, I keep hearing about, like, in the bracket contest, that's the one that's, you know, you have to pick that as your upset, one of your many upsets. I used to tell people all the time at the counter, like, you know you don't have to pick all upsets. Um, and I had heard, <laughs> like, all, all upsets very rarely happen. Now, should you bet dogs? Yes. Will... Wise guys bet favorites? Of course. There's a lot of short numbers, Teddy. There's a lot of twos. There's a lot of two and a halves. Um, it's okay to lay the points there, too. I I have fun with this week because a lot of people that have been, you know, listening to stuff, um, they're, they're, they're all over Ken Palm. They're all over this. They're coming into the book this week. They already know everything. And you know what I say about everybody knowing anything. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows nothing, I believe, is the way you yeah. express it. Uh, yeah. Of course, well, radio, great radio, follow on radio edit. That's the radio edit version. <laughs> Nobody knows is. nothing. Yeah. Uh, great follow on radio Twitter, edit. at SportsBKConsig. Uh, Dave, I want to ask you real quick before I throw the mic to uh, uh, Steve. Will you be joining us on Friday at the Wager Talk oh, party yeah. over at the West? Mine is 900. Two to seven. What? Oh, minus nine hundred. Two to seven p.m. Pacific time. It's free. You don't have to sign up in advance. All you got to do is show up at the Westgate. Uh, we got free uh, a place for you to sit and free booze for you. You going to be there? Of course. It's a it's it's a must. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of maybe doing the shows on Friday. Yeah, Dave, so I, can I was going to say, why don't you do it live? I'll I'll be on with you normally about seven Eastern at that time, middle of that party. Why don't you do it live from the show? See if you can do it there. We'll have some uh, the connection, we'll have Chris Allen there and some other guys. The connection stinks oh, down really? there. That's the problem. And yeah. plus, and the volume's there high. may be some there may be some debauchery going on amongst <laughs> you know the people that we don't need to put on the air anywhere. I don't want any drama. I'm sure Prez will be there and he'll be coming in over people's shoulders and all this other stuff. So I don't want I don't want any drama. It's a good idea though, Mero. I'll actually run it by the producers uh today to see if we could actually do it live from there. Um but I mean if we got Morenzi and Cam on at the same time with us down there, I don't know. That might blow up. That might blow the whole social media thing up if we actually do that. I don't know if that's a good would, idea or not. Yeah, we'd have, we'd have Vancouver with Marinci. We'd have me on the East Coast in Virginia. We'd have you live in Vegas. I mean, that little that might break the internet. It might officially break the internet, which would be a good bad thing. You, it might. You know how you look at it. So Dave Sharapan is confirmed. He will be there, folks. And once again, that's two to seven. He's going to try to confirm. I shouldn't say that. You know, he wants to be there. Uh, but if not, he will be. Oh, able to I'll be the there at the beginning. I'll be there <laughs> right, at the exactly. beginning. My plan is is from you know at least from four. two to three fifteen. Right. I'll be there, and then depending on what my schedule is going to be, because I'm on the air every day from four to seven, and it is a busy day. There's a lot of basketball games to be on, so um, you know. And who knows? I mean, somebody might sign another contract or get traded in the NFL on Friday. 
I mean, it, we can't get away from the NFL and, you know, futures talk and who's going here. And my Steelers went and got their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. Pretty excited about that. <laughs> you must be really excited. It's funny. And for we, what it's worth, I will be Brady there. Uh, sorry, Steve. No, I was like, we didn't mention Brady well, yesterday at all, I just realized. Yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brady resigned, apparently. Uh, and, you know, we have NFL free agency on full display. We have Major League Baseball free agency on full display. And no one's paying any attention to anything but college hoops this week. Uh, so uh, it is what it is. For what it's worth, Dave, just to mention, uh, I'm not going to be there at the Open. I'm not going to be there at 2. It'll probably be three, sometime between 3 and 4 by the time I get there. Uh, so okay. hopefully we'll have a chance to break bread, at least briefly, uh, on yeah. Friday over at the Westgate. Well, that's, that'll yeah. be the most I'll powerful be, I, hopefully I'll be back. of the week at 3 o'clock. You guys cross oh, yeah. paths. Oh, man. <laughs> that'll be a power, powerful 15 just, minutes right there. So that's careful, what, 2 to 7 like, Friday. Yeah, just like Ghostbusters, though, we can't cross the streams. That would be you bad. Never should a lot cross of things streams. bad happens when you cross the streams, yeah. Hey, Dave, the couple minutes we got left here, um, if you want to kick any NBA info or an NFL with Brady and stuff, but I want to close out on the tournament, I want to ask you real quick. You mentioned how, like, the lines, you know, they'll be pretty solid. It always amazes me. Not conference tournaments. We saw a ton of games last week land within a basket. We see that every year because, yeah. look, you've got two months of common opponents, you know, 20 games of common opponents. The lines are sharp. But it always amazes me how accurate these tournament lines are when you get two teams from conferences that maybe haven't even played each other all season or have any common opponents. Um, just your thoughts on that and also how the public will probably be hitting dogs this week more so than they normally do. 100% on both counts. I, I'm – I tell people all the time, I mean, conference tournament week is is actually more fun uh, as far as the amount of games is more. The basketball games being here in Vegas is fantastic. I took advantage of that this year. I went to three different conference tournaments. It's, it was great. Took the kids. It was a lot of fun. There's not a lot of people at some of these games. You could get really good seats for an inexpensive ticket. The numbers are the tightest they are all season um, in conference tournament week. I mean, it is tough. And the baskets, like you said, one or two baskets decide games line-wise as well as, like, money line. The totals are even really pretty tight. You get into this week, and you're right, there should be a bit of a drop-off, and there are a couple games that get away from you. But for the most part, the numbers, just you just put them up, and you really don't have to move them. I, I used to say this was one of the easiest weeks of the year to book – because you have so much money in the pool, I equate it to like like horse guys like you know Sig or Marco might you know understand this or appreciate this or guys that bet horses like the Kentucky Derby, the amount of money in the pool makes there be opportunities that don't exist normally. This is what this week is for the books. You have games and just like you don't have to do much. You don't have to move lines. You don't have to go get this money. Wise guys can usually get more opportunities to make bets because there's so much public money on one side. And the books are okay with this is it, man. I mean, after this, we're looking at NBA, NHL, and and, and a long baseball season. I mean, there's going to be USFL and other stuff, Masters. But this is it for the book. This is a huge revenue month. So they're okay needing decisions, and they're okay with, like, you don't have to go and, and even try to lessen it. So if you have 85 to 90% of the bets on one side, it's there for the taking. And, <laughs> I mean, I used to tell the Sharp guys, this is your week, man. You can pick and choose pretty much what you want. You get the limit. The line may not move. It may only move a half point. Where three weeks ago in February, you bet a game and we got to move it two points because we can't get a bet on the other side. So – it's an interesting time, man. It's it, and plus, you know, I mean, like today, we got we got a full slate of hockey. Nobody's paying any attention. I wore the Rangers hat because I didn't know Prez wasn't going to be here. Rangers is a play today against Anaheim on a five game road trip. Lost the first four. This one finishes today. I mean, I think you know if it was Prez was here, it probably I don't hope it's not his two dollar play, but it'd probably be the Rangers in regulation or Rangers on the puck line. They're going to win that hockey game tonight. Yeah, Dave, I've been telling Teddy all week, shh, it's quiet time. Don't tell people about the NBA and the NHL is right up there. It's always quiet time with the NHL. That's why you and Prez have been crushing it this season. But, um, yeah, yeah NHL, NBA, still some money to be made there. And try to get more than 5000 in a regular season Texas Southern game down and see how the sports books look at you. But, like, Hell tonight, no. it won't be as much of a problem, right? So that's a good point for the Sharps. This is a good week for the public and the pros and the Joes. Dave Sharapan, veteran Las Vegas odds maker. He'll be on Sports Grid all week long, channel 159, Sirius XM, Sports Grid TV with me 
Friday night after a little pre-party uh, sports. What is it? The Cash Considerations Podcast at Sports yep. BK Con- big on Twitter. What else you got going, Dave? Uh, Bostonian versus the book Monday through Friday. Me and Matt Peralt bang out a podcast every day where we talk about different things in the industry. We talk about the lines. We give uh, you know a game or two at the end. He likes to concentrate on, and we go from there. So that's available on props.com and YouTube and anywhere else. And yeah, the Twitter. I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna have pictures, we're gonna have all kinds of things from this meetup in Vegas. I'm already anticipating returning if I have to leave and coming back for the tail end at seven. Yeah. And then carrying that to some sort of dinner or other event that I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of fun and get a lot of good food. So I can't wait to see everybody. It's gonna be a blast. Yeah, it's an excellent point. I make the over-under ending time over 7.01 p.m. Vegas time for that event. So I think that's a pretty Good safe bet. You'll be able to get – you'll be there beforehand and after the Sports Grid show on Friday. That's Dave Sharapan from Las Vegas. Hey, look, we flex say good Tuesday. sports – Good good Twitter. Yes, thank you. A little Flex Tuesday from Dave Sharapan. Good Twitter handles. We overuse that a lot, but he is a great Twitter follower uh, at Sports BK Consig, at Sports BK Consig. Some great behind-the-scenes stories from his career – in the sportsbook industry. Uh, Teddy will be back tomorrow on Wednesday, same time, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, $2 Tuesday, the Prez, NHL style, $2 Tuesday, wagertalk.com, and then three best bets for $5 at sportsmemo.com for Tuesday and Tuesday only. Teddy will do it again tomorrow. Take us home. Sure. I want to thank Jimmy Adams, Tony Mejia, and Dave Sherapin. I want to thank my co-host, Steve Merrill, and I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with us. Between now and tomorrow's show, enjoy the games. And good luck. Tuesdays is known as Two Dollar Tuesdays at WagerTalk.com and SportsMemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers' best bet or daily package for only two dollars. 